If you were the Prime Minister of Israel on October 8th, what would you do? If I'm the Prime Minister of Israel like Netanyahu, I'm a killer, I'm a mass murderer, I've been killing Palestinians all my life and I've absolutely had no pushback, so I would kill. What should Israel have done in your opinion? That's what, oh, that's all I'm asking. Not this. But why are you arguing with other people who are not here? But no, no, but the, the argument Just is crazy. Just talk to me. When I tell you not this, to tell me, so what, as if I have to come up with a, with a, with a solution. The Israeli government all throughout their years have always chosen force, have always chosen military conflict, and they are not interested in peace. As a matter of fact, they're talking openly about the end of days. Bassem, great to have you on the show. Um, one of the reasons is we haven't talked about the Israel-Palestine situation. Enough. enough. <laughs> it, nearly enough. And actually, we haven't for the reason that when October 7th happened, we had a few people on because we were in America. It was easy to access the people we wanted to talk to. And those are mostly what you would, I guess, say is a pro-Israel perspective. And we've struggled to get people on since who, who are sensible and who want to present a different argument. So it's great to have you on. And I guess the way I feel is uh, I think we see two main perspectives being talked about in both the mainstream and actually new media as well, which is, you know, there's one side which is genocide, genocide, genocide. And the other side is you know, October 7th, therefore Israel is allowed to do whatever it wants. And I think that's kind of not where most people are from speaking to people here in the West. I think a lot of people feel that what they're seeing out of Gaza is horrific, absolutely horrific. And on the other hand, they also feel that what they saw on October 7th was horrific and they sort of expected that response because that's what most countries would do is what I hear from a lot of people. What do you make of that? And how can we add some nuance to this? this so discussion? what do you mean most countries will do? So most countries will go and kill 30,000 people? No, in, most, in people, six, most in countries will kill a lot more. I mean, if, oh, you, so, if you look at 9-11... So, so we should be happy with 30,000? No, I'm not saying happy. I'm saying this is what people feel would happen in response to something like October 7th. Mm. Just from speaking to normal people. Whether it's, whether it's right or but wrong... But why are we something? resetting the clock at October 7th? I'm not resetting the clock. No, but, but here's the thing, because it's, it's either like... October seventh, mm. but what what about uh, what about October second? What about um, September fifteenth? Like the the whole idea of like people think that there was like a ceasefire before October seventh. That's not true. Three weeks before October seventh, Israel bombed Gaza three days straight, and there was no music festival to do that. I mean, before October seventh, there was uh, 430, uh, 234 Palestinians killed in the West Bank, which is not even in Gaza. There is like a seventy kids killed that's without October 7th. The thing is, you only see October 7th, but the fact is like, you, if you're a Palestinian, what options do you have? You throw locks, uh, you're a kid, you throw a lock, a rocks and your limbs will be broken. Uh, you join armed resistance, you're gonna be called a terrorist and killed. Uh, you don't do anything and you sit in your home and your home will be confiscated and your land will be confiscated in the West Bank. Uh, you boycott BDS and you don't have a job. So what, 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 what are you supposed to do? And the fact is, but that uh, yeah. argument plays both ways, is what I'm saying to you, which is why a lot of people are kind of conflicted, which is why I don't well, talk. There's no conflict, hold, because hold before on. October 7th... So let me make the point, okay. Hold on. Because I, I don't want to have a, like a big argument. I'm interested in your perspective, but I have to put the question to you that I think a lot of people would want the answer to, which is, if you were, if you were the Prime Minister of Israel on October 8th, what would you do? You see, that's again, you're resetting the clock. You are, you are, you are judging people what you do for their reaction. Yeah. Before October 7th, there is a total of 100,000 Palestinians Fine. killed and injured. Agreed. You cannot keep pushing people to the limit and when they react violently. Okay, what happened October 7th? No, let, 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 what, uh, let's okay, accept what, your argument. What, what happened October 7th? Well, I'm going to ask you that in a second, but let's accept your argument. For the sake of argument, I'm not saying this is what I think, but for the sake of argument, let's say the October 7th was a perfectly justified uprising on the basis of all the terrible atrocities Israel has committed. Let's say we accept that. Okay, you're the Prime Minister of Israel on the 8th of October, what would you do? Yeah, because I'm, if I'm the Prime Minister of Israel, I will do exactly what, what Netanyahu does because Israel have been doing more stuff than this and was getting away with it, was getting away with murder. But that's what uh, you would do, right? Uh, uh, Israel just killed seven international workers from the UN. And you know what they did? Oh, sorry, you know what? It's war. I mean, mistakes happen. We're sorry, guys. Up yours. Do you, do you this not is think a, that's true, though? Of course not, because there is a history of Israel killing international workers and UN with absolutely no consequences. If Israel today uh, stopped the Gaza war, you know what will happen? Israel will be applauded. Thank you so much for just killing 30,000 people. We're so happy that you just killed those amount of people. And there will be no consequences for the murders and the war crimes that Israel have been doing for six months. 
It's crazy. You think like you're asking me what, what should I do? If, if I'm the prime minister of Israel like Netanyahu, I'm a killer. I'm a mass murderer. I've been killing Palestinians all my life and I've absolutely had no pushback. So I will kill. I will do exactly no, what I don't mean if that. you were Netanyahu. I mean, if you were the prime minister. If of I was, yeah. I wouldn't have done the stuff that would have led to October 7th. Fine, but... That, that's not really where we are. That's not the reality of the situation. No, the reality of the situation that you want to corner people on October 7th and you forget no, what no, happens no, no. before. But that's not, I'm not trying to corner anyone. I'm saying... You just asked me if I was the Prime Minister of Israel. Yes. If I was Netanyahu... No, I would do that. If I was Basim, I wouldn't have done the stuff that Netanyahu has done that would lead but, to October 7th. Fine. What I'm trying to get out with you, I don't have an agenda. I'm trying to understand from a normal person's perspective, who's not as informed as you are, right? I'm not as informed as you are, how to think about this issue, because I, I'm telling you, this is what a lot of if people If I'm a normal person, how would I accept that like my family would be killed, injured, and kidnapped every day before? Everybody talks about the hostages, which is terrible, of course. But do you know that there's 5,000 ho uh, Palestinian hostages in the Israeli police, but we don't call them hostages. They are prisoners because they were arrested by people in uniform because they were put in, 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 uh, in prison institutions. So we don't call them, but as a fact of fact, they are hostages. They're taken, they're kidnapped in the middle of the night from their families and they're put in the prison. And half of those 5,000 people in prison, there is no accusation against them. If these are not hostages, what are they? We talk about rape but we don't talk about the sexual violence that has been submitted, committed against the Palestinian women for all of these years, but we just take Israel word for it. We don't talk about murder and we don't talk about the murder daily. Since October, in one month after October 7th, in the West Bank, 40 children were killed. If 40 children were killed here in London, the whole world will be like up there in arms. But nobody cares because they are Palestinians and their blood seems to be not as equal or not as precious as, as Israelis. I'm not talking about your opinion. I'm talking about right. how the world is doing. But, but what I'm trying to get at with you is, you see, we're, we're getting stuck in that same dynamic that people often have when they're having this discussion where the pro-Israel people have their points and the pro-Palestine people have who's their points. Who's doing point. the killing, Habibi? Who's doing the killing? Well, who's, who's doing the killing? Who's stealing the land? Who's pushing people out of their homes on every single day? Who's putting another human beings in a concentration camp condition and bombing the shit out of them for 50 years? And then you come and talk to I'm me about October I'm just putting a very 7th. simple point to you, which yes. I think is a fair point. Which is? Which is that to a normal person who's looking at the situation, they agree with you in that what Israel is doing is atrocious and looks horrific. And nobody wants to, see, I'm a father, I don't want to see babies being bombed. It's horrific. And yet it happens. And yet it happens. And yet it continues to and, happen. And, and, and it's horrible. And, and yet my and, tax money and your up. tax money is-, is, is You've got to let me finish that? the point. Sorry. Like, you are acting as if I'm some kind of hostile interviewer, which I'm really not. I want to get to the bottom of what you think, but I'm trying to put the, the mainstream, ordinary, uninformed person's perspective to you, which is where I'm coming from, right? to try and unpack some of these arguments. So yes, the normal person is, and I, I went to the, the pro-Palestine protests here in London several times and talked to people and that's what they all say, you know what, we're horrified about what we're seeing. But you also have to be able to see that any country, any country, you say any country that's treated like Gaza and the West Bank would react in this way. Okay, let's accept that. But I put it to you that any country that was attacked the way Israel was attacked would also react in this way, right? So if I'm an ordinary person, I'm kind of, I don't know what to think about these two things. Is that a fair argument? No. Tell me why. Because again, uh, you are talking about like, if that happened to us on October 7th and you forget, you forget the atrocities that have been happening that led to October 7th. And I don't, I, think, I don't forget. Okay, so the thing, the thing is, it's, it's, you're really putting me in that same position. How can we react? It's like, what, look at what have you done before October 7th. Mm -hmm. And let's say, for example, you reacted badly. How long can Israel go in? And then we go in into the position of like, what's a proportionate response? I, we've been asking what's a proportionate response since the death toll in Gaza with 3,000. Now it's 33,000. Mm -hmm. The thing is, there's no number that's enough. If, if we, this could go on for a year and you'll have 300,000 Palestinians killed and the world was still asking, but what would have Israel done? Because we well, don't ask these questions when, when, when the- But when the, the question still to... has to be asked because whatever the background, whatever happened before, the question still has to yeah. be asked what Israel should have done. Exactly what they 8th. have done. That's what they should have done. Yeah, yeah, let, 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 let's continue. Kill Gaza, kill the people, and then you, you, after you, they're you, done, let's go to the West yeah, Bank and sarcastic. kill 300,000. Yes, yeah, but because it's, I'm sorry, because 
if this is the kind of conversation, like what, what Israel that have done? They have. Remember when when Israel was saying like, oh, it's not us that, that bombed the Ahli Hospital. It is the Hamas. Yes. Since then, they 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 bombed 36 hospitals. Does that is that okay? Hold on, you you're acting as if I'm justifying anything. No, I'm not. The, 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 I'm the question asking... the question is is very weird. What could Israel has done as not, if not what as could. if there has no other choice? No, no, no. What could what what October seventh has happened, mm-hmm. right? We, it's happened. What should Israel have done in your opinion? That's what. Oh, that's all I'm asking. Not this. N- okay, but not this. Okay, what should they have done? Not this. That's a negative. I'm asking what in the positive sense what they should have done. How, how should they have reacted? My answer didn't change. Not this. But that isn't. They are murderers, and they are violating international law. They are la- or they are interna- They are violating every single uh, international piece of law, UN resolutions. And then you're asking me what else should they have done? I don't understand the question. No, no, no. I'm not asking what else they should have done. Mm. I'm saying if a country is attacked in this way, how should it react? Maybe they stop doing what the other what other people to do it, so they will not be attacked in this way. Okay. So you think that the prime minister of Israel, in the situation he's in, when X number of, people, of his own civilians have been slaughtered, is in a position to say, okay, we'll just you know, stop doing whatever we're doing. We're not going to respond in any way. Mm. You think that you should do that? No, no, no. Let's let, let, let him continue killing. I mean, I, I, your, ask, your answer, your, your question is like, it's like you're going in and you are nuking a whole country because you've been attacked. Like, what else would I do? But hold on. What else? But, but this is, I mean, look at history. Like, would you say that... Um, what the Allies did in Germany in World oh, War II. the Dresden conversation. It's not yeah. the Dresden conversation. Yeah. We dropped 50 Hiroshima's a month on Germany for yes, a year and yes. a half. And that's good. Who said it's good? It's, it's, it, this is the thing. It's like, this is because this is the same talking points of Israel. Look what the, the Allies did in Dresden. What did they do? It's just the fact that that's like something horrific that happened in the past does not justify no, what no, you're doing in the future. No, now. I'm not saying that something horrific happened in the past justifies what we're doing in the future. And by the way, I'm surprised about the way this conversation is going because when before we started, you were like, I'm a big fan of you guys. And I really am keen to have because an honest conversation. Because the question is very inf- infuriating. The question Why? when you ask people, if you're in Israel position, what you should have done? Yeah. Again, you are asking me to qual- quantify the reaction of the atrocity that's been happening all through. And what else did you know? Like if, 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 if your only choice is killing children and killing unarmed civilians and this, show me one war, one war where 80% of a place were destroyed, 50% of the victims were children and 100% of the population were displaced. And then you tell me you don't have any other choice. I, I didn't say any of those things. All I'm saying to you is there is a reality of where we are, right? And whether you like it or not, or whether I like it or not, I don't like it, you don't like it, right? But it's not going to get solved by pretending that Israel is in a position. Of- and how could it be solved? I have no idea. That's why I'm asking you. Okay, good. But you say not like this and you don't give a positive Well, I have reason. no idea either. But what is happening? Israel is okay. a rook. Well, that's a, a fair a, answer. I, uh, Israel a fair is answer. a rook. Israel is a criminal, is a war criminal. Okay. And it's been getting away with murder Fine. and genocide for years. And the international community and international uh, uh, world is not is letting it get away with murder and genocide every single day. And then we are left with, sorry to say, a, a useless questions like, what's the proportionate response? What else can I do if it's your country? But that's what not, you have done? Not, I that, didn't that, ask, but no, you asked what, if you are Netanyahu, yeah, what would you have done? Yeah. And I would tell you, that's if I was Netanyahu question. and the whole world is letting me do whatever I, I want, I would I didn't say do if it. you're Netanyahu. I said if you're the prime minister of Israel. I wouldn't have done the because stuff that have led to the Because my sense is you're 7th. a very different person to Benjamin Well, Netanyahu. if I am the prime minister of Israel, I wouldn't have done the stuff that would have led to October 7th. I, I totally accept that. But my If question... you were the president of the United States, if you were Tony Blair, if yeah. you were in the movie, would you go to invade Iraq because... because Absolutely of... not. I was exactly. on the streets protesting against that. Exactly. Okay? And exactly. against... I didn't support the war in Afghanistan. Exactly. I didn't support, support the war in Iraq. But 9-11... If you were in America, how could you not invade Iraq? Because you had nothing that to is do exactly, with 9-11. That's exactly, but, that's, but, exactly but, that's exactly the answer of your question. Yes, except Hamas, which controls Gaza, had everything to do with October 7th. And what about the killings happening in the West Bank as we speak? Completely wrong. Mm-hmm. W- w- so, so why is he doing I, it? I think the reason we're having this conversation this way is you think I'm arguing with you. No, I'm, I'm really not. My answer is not directed to you. It's directed to the narrative. But I, you're speaking to me. So let's speak to me, right? Okay. So your answer, I take it, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, to my question of 
what's the positive way forward is you don't know because it's a it's it's impossible situation because no I, other than I, Israel should stop what it's no, doing. No, because it's useless. I have to say it's useless. It's useless. Because I have I have lost hope. Mm. That's a good answer. Let's yes. talk about I that. Lost, I have lost Let's hope talk about because that. you have a country that's getting away with killing children on camera in front of everybody. And everybody is like, mm, too bad. I don't think anyone's like that. Really? Yeah. Have you watched Kirby, the spokesman of the, of the White House? We say like, that we've seen Israel killing people. It's like, well, well they're investigating. Kirby, it doesn't speak for me. I'm looking I, I, at it no, going, no, no, this no, is but, horrific. But, but you, me and you and Francis, we're not the people in charge. The people in charge, the people in power, the people who are holding the strings, the people who are really making things happen in the world don't care. I don't think that's true either. They don't care. I think they care. They just don't know what to do, like you no, and me. No, they don't care. They look at Palestinians as lesser group of people, that they, it's okay to kill as many of them as possible. There is not a single country in the world. You talk about Iraq, you're talking about, there has not a single modern warfare or old warfare where that kind of the kind of casualties we've seen happening on daily basis in front of everybody is happening and nobody's doing anything about it. So that's why I lose hope. Like the thing is, like, is there, okay, what kind, what will be the number that will make you say, okay, that's enough. It's not a bad number. A hundred, exactly. Look, it, we killed half a million civilians in Germany because we felt that that was the only that's way a, to end the war. Again, that's a bad example. And we shouldn't do it because we evolved, we as humans, we cannot say we enslaved ha like millions of black people and that should be, the, uh, and that's okay. Because, but that's a different example. If we stick with the Germany example, we did have to do that. No, you didn't have. Yeah, to. we did. Did you? Did you have to? It was the only way. Did to you destroy. have to rape two million people? Uh, two of million women. Not, but that's a different thing. Mm, why? Because ki destroying s infrastructure, like factories and railways, and did we need to drop two atomic bombs? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, yes. So basically, because that in saved order lives. to end the that war, that saved lives. In order, <laughs> that saved that saved probably hundreds of thousands of lives. Uh, absolutely, it did. Absolutely, because Japan, even after the bombs were dropped. The Japanese military tried to stage a coup because the emperor wanted to surrender. They were going to fight to the death. Invading Japan would have cost hundreds of thousands of So this of kind lives. of argument justifies whatever damage no. we do to other human beings no, because- not at all. Uh, not so, at all. so basically not killing 30,000 Palestinians will save more lives. No, I don't, I didn't say that. We, but th but that's, the, that's that. the argument. No, the, you said what number is going to be where we say enough, as if as if we reach a certain civilian casualty and then we're like, stop. I'll give you the answer, there's no number. Correct. Tomorrow, Correct. if a million Palestinians killed in one day, Probably. people will not care. It's not because people stop caring about those people because, for, because we were told that those people are animals, they are terrorists, there's Hamas or Hamas sympathizers or Hamas voters, and they should be I wiped out. I, I'm not talking about you, well, I'm not talking about you. I'm just- But I'm, why don't you talk to me? I'm, I, I know, no, no, I'm talking to you as people but, talking about But let's about talk about my opinions or okay. what I'm putting to you, right? Okay. I don't think Palestinians are animals. I don't think they're bad people or anything like that. We're talking about the situation as, as it exists. And yet you react differently for the death of Palestinians, for the death of, of, of Israelis because- uh, Do uh, I? Uh, yeah, you do. How so? Because in October 7th, which uh -huh. is our seems to be our starting point- It's not. To, uh, 1,139 Israelis were killed and I don't know, 170. And I said that's wrong. Yeah, of course, of course. But then, you're asking if I was the prime minister, what I, what I should have done. But you never ask yourself, if I was, uh, I was Palestinian, what if I have done? Because here's the thing. Sorry, I'll ask that question again. If I was Palestinian. If you are Palestinian, how could I react to that daily atrocities to me? Don't you, but don't but you know? I already said, for the sake of argument, yeah. for the sake of argument, let's accept that October 7th is a legitimate uprising. Remember? I'm not saying it's legitimate. I know you I'm not know, saying. I know you're not. I'm saying. If you're a Palestinian and you have all of your family. Palestine, killed, do you know what for the sake of argument means? Mm, yes. Right? We're exploring the idea. So if you're the sake of argument, if you're a Palestinian yeah. in the position of like all of your family were killed, all of your. I'd be on how the front you, line. Okay. So I, we, I wouldn't be killing civilians. You wouldn't? No. No. But if you were a, a prime minister of Israel, you would kill civilians. I, I didn't say anything about what I would do if the prime minister okay. of Israel, right? What I'm saying is if I was someone in Gaza whose family had been killed, I'd be very angry, obviously. I'd probably be angry. But at you them. will have the civility not to kill civilians. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But would. if you have a prime minister, I will not. Uh, why would I, why but would but I if I'm the prime minister children? of Israel, I will be justified to act with no civility. Did because I say what that? Happened.
No, but I'm saying. But why are you arguing with other people but, who are not here? But no, no, but the, the argument Just is talk crazy. Just to me. And I know, but you're the, here with me. I know, but the argument is crazy. Why? You, we are trying to find justification or other ways for Israel to react differently no. as if no. it is that's the no. only no. way. Because when I tell you when I tell you not this, to so tell me so what? As if I have to come up with a with a with a solution for the murderous prime minister who's been Bas killing Bas people for the past Bas six months. No. No no no. Our partners Give Send Go are hosting thousands of crowdfunding campaigns in the US, UK and around the world right now. There's a campaign on there right now where you can invest in a UK startup that aims to revive the traditional high street. Imagine a world where we're less reliant on the huge supermarket chains. What if there was an easy way to spend our money with local, independent grocers, butchers, bakers, etc. Instead of lining the pockets of faceless corporate behemoths built on cheap labour, monopolising the market and that have destroyed small businesses. Barrow uses AI tech to pick up your shopping from hundreds of independent stores in a single transaction when it's all delivered to you at the same time. Give Sand Go have proved time and again that they uphold freedom of speech, unlike the bigger crowdfunding sites. That's why we are proud to partner with them. They, like us, believe that with openness and honesty, we'll create more understanding and ultimately more harmony in the world. Starting a campaign on Give, Send, Go is easy and intuitive. Go to GiveSendGo.com today. That's GiveSendGo.com to start raising money for whatever's important to you. And now, back to the interview. Look, you're interested in peace, right? Is that mm -hmm. fair to say? Mm -hmm. You want the killing to stop. Mm -hmm. So do I. So do most people. And that's what I said to you at the beginning. Most people want the killing to stop, and they're trying to work out at the same, in a very difficult, I mean, this is, there's a reason it's been going on for as long as it's been going on. It's complicated and it's no, difficult. No, it's not complicated. It's not very Pastor, complicated. It's finish. a group of people who took up other people and continue killing them. It's not that complicated. It's very obvious. Well, if it was that simple, it would have been resolved by now. No, it will not be resolved because people who are evil have the power and you cannot do anything in order to change that. I mean, they are, they are killing you in your face and you're telling you, we're killing people. You, you try, uh, okay. you try. Can I just say, firstly, this reminds me of my childhood. So thank you guys. <laughs> Who's mummy and who's daddy? Yeah, That's the question. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't see gender, it's 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I think it's very important for people um, to understand, because obviously passions are very high when it comes to this subject. What is it like for the ordinary Palestinian before October 7th? What is it like? What was it like? So just explain what is it what is it like to live in that area? What rights do they have? What rights are they being denied? Etc. Because so I think people if, need to if, understand. So so there's this kind of like image that oh we disengaged from Gaza. We left you guys to do whatever you want, but actually you disengage and then you put a siege. There was no access to uh, air, sea, and land. Everything has to go through something. Uh, you, there have been actually a time where uh, Palestinians were put on a calorie count. So the kind of food that was uh, admitted, the kind Basim, of... Can I just ask a question? Mm. I know this is very passionate to you. If you could just slow down slightly I'm, because, I'm because I'm, uh, people... I'm sorry. Yeah. So basically, you're, uh, I know that they've been used a lot like an open air concentration camp or prison. Uh, two million people lived in the most concentrated, more dense area in the world. And you have no rights. You have no rights to travel. Everything has to go through another authority that controls your food, your electricity, your water. Some some parts of Gaza, you're only on two water two hours a day to get water. I mean, you can go on and on and on. There's just like mass books like uh, written. If you're living in the West Bank, your land is being taken away from you, being eaten into your land every day. Your your house could be just like, settlers can go in, take your land and, and kick you out. Uh, you To go to like a one kilometer distance, you have to go to like seven or eight checkpoints. Uh, you're, as we speak right now, there's two units in Hebron and this is, something called Yehuda Scholl, who is the founder of uh, Breaking the Silence. He's an ex-IDF soldier. So like, as we speak right now, there's two units uh, on an eight hour shift in Hebron that their only mission is to maintain the presence or make their pres presence felt, which they can go into your house, a house that intelligence tells you that there's no threat, goes in, separate men and women, ruffle the feather, go uh, ruffle everything, break everything, go from house to house. This is like the daily life of Palestinians. They have no humanity, they have no rights. 
they, even if you are in the West Bank, I'm not even talking about Gaza, you are not allowed as a Palestinian to have any fertile land in Area C, which is all of the fertile land. You as a Palestinian, your water share is one-fifth or one-sixth of a settler. You're not allowed to dig for wells. You're not allowed to dig for water. You're not allowed to actually, you're, even if you, it's, 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 it's a very inhumane way. And it's been going like this for 75 years. And nobody's doing anything about it. So at a, and, and, and at a certain point, you, and, and, and you as a Palestinian, you can, uh, at a certain, uh, IDF soldiers can come and take you, put you in prison, put you on administrative detention for months and even years. There's some that have been in jail for 10, 15 years with absolutely no accusation. Israel is the only uh, country in the world that tries children in front of a military court with 99.7% conviction rate. There's nothing, that, that never happens anywhere. So that is the, that is even, I didn't even scratch the service. And, and when, you, when you do that on daily basis for 75 years, at a certain point, people will crack and people will throw rocks. If you throw rocks, you and you're a child, your, your limbs are broken. If you are a Palestinian and you take a, uh, a, a, a dagger and want to fight back, you'll be, of course, killed and you'll be labeled as a, as a terrorist. But what happens is that they are responding to the daily terrorism that has been happening for years. And nobody is caring because we have already decided that those group of people do not have the right of equal living or equal right. And that's very distressing. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all like, I don't like Hamas, by the way. I, I, I don't like the whole idea about Islamization of the conflict because I think that's the worst thing that like putting religion has become Islam against Judaism, that's wrong. Okay, agree, be, be, absolutely. Be, because, because, because Palestinians also, there's a lot of Christians and those Christians are having also their rights are taken away. Yeah. Even if you are a Christian from England and you go there, people will spit on you from the Jewish, uh, Jewish side because they think like, you know, Christians are like, uh, are lesser than them. So it's not just like a Muslim against uh, against Judaism yeah. thing, right? So we have all of these rights taken away from you as human beings, and at a certain point you will rise. At a certain point, and I talk this about like it's so easy killing and oppressing people remotely has become so easy. You're you're sitting behind a a, a screen with your remote and you fly and drone, you kill them. Mm -hmm. So, and this kind of remote can you be, we became so you know at the, at, Defensitized. At, the, at a certain point. We had to have a sword and I have to put all of my force to drive into your body, right? Now it's like, pew, and a whole block is gone. And I make this example in many other podcasts. I say, if I go and take a knife and I kill you, I'm a terrorist. But if I'm sitting in my $64 million F-16, pushing a button, dropping an $16,000 AF4 bomb on a, a whole block decimating you, that's war. Yeah. If I go in and I kidnap you, that's terrorism. But I go in with my units and I kidnap 100 people per day and put them in my prisons and have legal uh, background because of my course help me and put you in prison. That's not kidnapping, that's imprisonment. I'm really glad you made the point about Islam and Judaism. I have family who come from the Middle East. My grandfather was Lebanese. He was Lebanese Christian. And this, com this conflict is much more complex than people who boil it down to Islam versus Judaism. It's quite a facile way of explaining what is actually a very serious, complicated conflict. So that is the situation for the average Palestinian. And as we've said, we've only barely scratched the surface. Now, what role does the government in Gaza play? That something like Hamas, how much, how much control do they have? How much, how, how do they rule that particular area? Is it a democracy, all of these no, things? No, it's not. I mean, like, you, 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 this is like a group of people who are popular. By the way, I apologize for if, if, if my reaction was a little bit over the top. No, but, but, Basim, but just, on, just on that, the, the, the only thing to I hope we can talk better on is I'm really trying to understand your perspective. I'm not trying to, like, drive talking mm -hmm. points or anything like that. So maybe when, when we talk more... Later, I hope we can do it in that spirit. No, That's no, all. No, you don't need to apologize. No, no, no. But I say like the, the reason I, I, I reacted, mm. I have mm. to understand because I've been hearing these talking points. Yeah. What else can we do? It's like but, guys, but, not but this, they're not, not talking this. points from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And but, I, 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 I have understand. more questions for but, you. But, yeah. but, but here's the thing. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to go to the history or the, but, but like yeah, Hamas, of course, of course. Hamas, when the, this animation happened, there was there was elections. It was a free election. Hamas took fifty three percent of the vote, not Fun. even the vast majority. When that happened, there was like a boycott and then Israel put them under siege without any bullet being shot. Yeah. And the story is, the story that has been put into people's mind, we disengage, 
they uh, they elected Hamas. They start uh, they they killed Fatah, the other Palestinian authority, and they started throwing rocks at us. That did not happen. There was like a whole like eighteen months between the election and the and the stoppage of ceasefire. And in that air area, Israel went in and killed the head of the security forces in Palestine. So so Hamas retaliated and kidnapped Jalad Shalit. And then there was like no more ceasefire. And then uh, Israel attacked Gaza. So the whole idea about like, we let them go. They in, they voted Hamas and they, they tried to uh, attack us. That's not the truth. Now, there is a local authority, which is Hamas, which is of course like they're trying to govern Gaza. But how can you govern a place where you don't have any access to the outside world when you're under siege, right? And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and if you put people uh, with their backs to the wall, they will have resistance. And their resistance will not like it because it's resistance. It could be, about, uh, you call it Islamic, you call it terrorist, you call it jihadi, you call it whatever. If, if, you, if, if a foreign country came into the, uh, come in London today, came in England and, and occupied you, We'd probably roll over, mate. People, <laughs> people, no, there were people that will that will know, be I militarized know. and they will use religion mm -hmm. and they will have Jesus Agreed. and they will have the cross and yeah. because people, be, but when, when people pushed into the world, they would be radicalized. Yes, of course. Right? So you cannot just push people into that situation. And then we talk about Hamas, right? Mm -hmm. the Netanyahu, in 2019, there was a recording of him bragging about financing Hamas. He was talking about that openly. People talk about like how Palestinians were given many opportunities and they let it away. And yet you have Netanyahu on record saying that he has personally sabotaged the Oslo Accords. So you have all of these in front of you. You have all of these people taking like, we're not going to have two-state solution. Palestinians don't have the right to exist. Palestinians don't have the right to have a state. And then you're talking about the reaction and then you focus on that. So every time you tell me Hamas, I will tell you Netanyahu. Every yeah. time you tell me October 7th, yeah. I'll tell you what happened before. Mm -hmm. Every time to tell me what, what should we do now, it's like, I don't know because you have made this happen. You know, like, remember you've marched against the war in Iraq. How did that work for us? How did that work for the, is the world saver after all of the trillions of dollars being sent to all of the British soldiers and the American soldiers that were killed, all of the people who were killed in Afghanistan, did that actually work? Iraq didn't attack us is the difference. That, you have to accept that's a different conflict, right? Absolutely, but again, you went in and you made an excuse. The WMDs that never existed. Agreed. Yeah, right? agreed. Yeah. And then you are now making other excuses. <laughs> and uh, you're making other excuses to decimate that. If even if, Hamas, even, what, what? even if Hamas attacked you, it does not, it does not justify killing all of those people, decimating a whole, a whole region, a whole city, a whole place. And I don't, I don't think people. anyone feels that that's, well, no, I'm sure there are some people who feel that, but as I said, I think when we started the conversation, I think most people are horrified at what's happening. Yeah, but, but, here's, rightly the, so. but here's the thing. There is a certain narrative that, that stayed in people's mind that made them justify what happens. First of all, the number of people that died on October 7th. And yet nobody's talking about the Hannibal Directive and how the Israeli forces that were actively involved in killing many of the hostages. And it was, and this is my problem and, uh, about like how the media covers this. Do you have Israeli channels and media like artists and, and, Israel, and Israel Today and, and Channel 12 who talked openly about the choice of the usage of the Hannibal Directive that have inflated the number of casualties from the Israeli side because their their own troops were bombing or or, or shooting at the kaput. Right? So what do you think what now, do you let think me is the okay, let, sorry, me, let me finish yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. And and yet the Western media went with all of the killing that happened October 7th and nobody talked about the Israeli reports. You talk about like the gang rape and then the Israeli report that decapitated babies and the Israeli post like that didn't happen. And yet the Western media did not even translate these reports. And yet these stories were the reason that people accepted the massive killing of Palestinians because like, oh, look at what happened. They raped people, they decapitated babies, they killed all of those people. But if you knew these information, it's like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. this is truly a disproportionate response. Yeah, what all, I'm ask, all I was gonna ask you is to flesh out what you think happened on October 7th, because, um, I, when I went and spoke to protesters, there was a whole range of opinions. Some some people said it never happened. Some people said it's no, a no, false no. Flag. Of course, they happened. No. Some, and then you were saying some details didn't happen. So I can tell how you many it, people do you think were killed? Uh, according by, to the Israeli reports, the official Israeli reports, the the, the, the papers that were submitted even to International Court of Justice, one thousand one hundred and twenty nine Israelis were killed. Mm -hmm. One thousand one hundred and twenty nine. Okay. Out of those, 
735 for civilians, and the rest were military and police. Okay. So 735 civilians. Babies, one baby were killed under the age of, of one year, which is Mila Kohen, 10-month-old, no decapitation. Um, a total of 49 children that were killed under the age of 19, 49, not 40 decapitated babies. There was no gang rape. There was, of course, there might be like a sexual violence, but like the whole idea about systemic, that did not happen. Again, according to the Israeli papers that were submitted to the international court. So now we have the, the truth. 735 uh, civilians. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 170, 200. I, I don't know how many people were kidnapped. Now, if you look at these numbers now, does this justify 30,000 people killed? No. But you you created like this shock value at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rape people, decapitated yeah. okay. babies, but cutting people out of, uh, cutting babies out of their wombs. Okay. That didn't yeah. happen. Okay. I, well, I'm relieved it didn't happen because it, it sounded... And again, that doesn't mean that what happened is good. No, no. It doesn't mean I, that I, what I happened is I acceptable. Don't, I don't but think But what I'm saying, saying that when you go on the people with, the, with an outrageous story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, of you course. Are making, you are priming people to accept what will happen next. Well, interesting. Let me just ask one yeah, one point on this because you mentioned earlier, you know, what would happen if London was invaded by a foreign country? What would happen if London was invaded by the Irish? The Irish have reasons to be angry with with England, right? And they had murdered seven hundred and how forty nine? Did you say innocent mm -hmm. civilians and didn't decapitate but killed the baby? How, you know, if if you say people with their back against the wall are going to react then how are people going to react in that situation? By the way, my example that I said about London. Right. Hey, what if like a foreign country come in and this immediate country, I would be here London or yeah. England are actually the position of the Palestinians. What I'm saying is if you come in and you have your whole country like invaded and yeah. your whole military is decimated and you have nothing, you will have resistance forces no, that I, will be radicalized. I understand. So that, I, was, that was my use. But your my use argument, is that like if was London was attacked now and London still powerful and can retaliate, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is if during the, the IRA and the troubles in Ireland, uh, where we did have terrorism in this country, uh, they had launched an invasion into northern England and slaughtered 750. But actually, it would have to be, uh, what's the population of Israel? About 10 million. So it would have to be six times that. So they slaughtered over 3,000 people, 3,500 people, innocent people, didn't decapitate them. Let's say there was no gang rape. How do you think England would react? Oh, okay. it, it, uh, well, it, I don't know. But, but the, the thing is, using these arguments, I think it's a distraction to what's happening right now. Because basically what we're saying, I think these are all ways to distract the conversation. But like, let's talk about what England would say and let's forget the killing that's happening on the no, 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 no. No, it's precisely because I care about the killing of innocent people now mm -hmm. that I think we have a responsibility to try and think about what, how these uh, inter why intertwined and intertangled mutual claims of violence and whatever get untangled. That's what I'm saying, right? So I think that the, the reality of why we're having this argument is I'm interested in trying to find out how this gets sorted out. But I will answer your question about what if the RAA or whatever England comes in and kills 3,000 okay. people, all right? We'll be back with our guests in a minute. But first, let me tell you about these super beat heart chews we've been using here at Trigonometry Towers. If you're looking for a way to turn your snacking habit into an easy way to support your health without sacrificing flavor, then heart chews may be the perfect solution. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Superbeets are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. For me, the best thing about Superbeets heart chews is that they're a great way to limit my caffeine intake. I really love that the chews have replaced my mid-morning coffee. Because the chews support healthy circulation, you not only get blood pressure support, but you also get heart healthy energy, which comes, importantly, without the crash. The chews are incredibly convenient. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. They're very easy to add to your routine. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Chews. Get a free 30 day supply of Super Beat Heart Chews and 15% off your first order by going to Get superbeats.com and using promo code TRIG. That's get super, B E E T S dot com, code TRIG. Now, back to the interview. You, you're missing something. Did actually England do to Ireland what Israel is did to Palestinians yes. for 75 years? Yes. For 75 years. Worse. I would bet, I would bet my life. You should speak to some that, Irish people. That England 
did not for 75 years uh-huh. kill 100,000 Irish people. You should speak to some Irish people. Did it, did, did, did it, no, no, in, in, the, not, in the 20th century. Did he kill 100,000 people in the 20th century? Probably not, but that doesn't mean that the Irish people didn't have very strong reasons Absolutely. to feel that yeah. they, 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 some yes. people felt that their terrorism was justified. Of course, there'll be lots of people that disagree. Mm. Anyway, I guess the question in terms of moving forward, like yes. how do you move forward, is what would you like... So let's say, again, for the sake of argument, Israel stops bombing, pulls out... Um, what would you like to see happen from there? Because you talked about the plight of the people in Gaza and in the West Bank. Let's say that all of that ends, and and you talked about land, and this is one of the things I always find interesting because obviously this is where there's such a big conflict between mm-hmm. because two peoples are making a claim to the same land. What should happen in terms of, like when you say give back the land, which bit of land? Well, first of all, uh, if if the war sta- stops today, if the first thing we knew, do we need to have Israeli officials being, uh, you know, arrested and put for to be tried for their war crimes? Okay, let's say that happens. Okay, and then let's talk about the bigger picture. Right. Okay, yeah. well, let's talk about the bigger picture. Like, the, what's what's the what 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 in your opinion? What is the what's the origin of the conflict? Why, I, why, why I, is it a problem? I, this is why I said at the beginning. I'm asking questions from the point of view of an uninformed person because I'm uninformed. Okay. So you're going to have to tell us what you think is the solution. Well, uh, a, a, a shorter... For example, on Ukraine, I, I think I know about it. I'm from the area. It's something I've spoken to a lot of very well-knowledgeable people about. I've read lots of books about it. I can tell you what the solution is on, for Ukraine, the war in Ukraine. And I said it on day one of the conflict. I said how it would end, which is probably how it will end, right? So what, what happened if uh, Ukrainian refugees fled from uh, Ukraine, came in here and claimed 20% of the land of England? Would you give it to them? Probably not. No. That's exactly what happened after the Holocaust. You have people coming from Europe, okay. mm-hmm. coming to, uh, to so Palestine. So how does this get solved now? No, no, my, 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 to get solved, we need to talk about the origin. You have people coming in, 1947, there was the partition. Of course, the, the, the Palestinians are like, why are we giving 55% of our land to 30% of the people that 20 years ago, they were not even in that country. So of course they said no. So Israel said like, well, no, we're keeping it. So they had the war and of course Israel won. And now Israel's like, well, you lost it. You don't have any claim for it now. And then after 1948, Israel took 78% of the land, leaving only 22% for the Palestinians. Well, in 1967, all of that was gone. And now Israel comes like, well, we gave you these uh, these these deals, and he didn't say it, but it was already a horrible deal. Mm-hmm. So you can, you cannot really nego- you cannot tell me like uh, now, let's accept the, all no no this. I'm just telling you like those Ukrainians who wanted twenty percent you didn't want to give them they ended up taking seventy percent of England and it's like well we we told you we want only twenty now we're gonna take seventy but no but I cannot accept it so it's, the whole idea about land you have pe- and and now it's become and and I have to be uh, I cannot really like kick out like 9 million Israelis who've been there. Well, that's why I'm it's, asking. A, it's already there. Yeah. It's already there. But at a certain point, the Palestinian Authority accepted 22%, which is the Oslo Accord. And even that was just sabotaged by Israel. So you are, you are basically in a position where the Palestinians have to, they, they are pushed into accepting really bad deals time after time after time after time again. And even that deals are not even like honored by the Israelis because they on paper, the Israeli should not. The Israel should not take the West Bank, and yet the West Bank is being disseminated into little Gazas. They are being disseminated by the illegal settlements that has been deemed illegal. But everybody, including the British government, including the American government, and yet the Israelis are doing it anyways. So basically, you are put in a position where whatever solution we can come up with, it's not going to happen. Well, what you would like to do is go to the settlement that was agreed in Oslo Accords. I mean, that's a starting point. And At what, was, the, start from what there. was what was what did uh, Israel and and uh, Gaza and the West Bank look like under those agreements? Well, under those agreements, I guess I'm again I'm not an expert. Like the whole of Gaza, and they're going to be like a land swap from inside Israel. And then the West Bank should there was like even on the table there was like the Is- the Palestinians will take ninety percent of the present West Bank, mm-hmm. which is now that not even exam because the West Bank has been eaten up by all of the settlements. So that was the Oslo Accords. But then you have Netanyahu on record who's like, oh, well, you know, I could claim any part of the West Bank as a military facility and I can take it. So I have effectively sabotaged the, the, the Oslo Accord. So, but that's what you'd like to go to as a solution. Again, but 
that is me, and I'm not a Palestinian, but I say that's at, that at least a starting point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but you have bigger points that I have absolutely no idea how to solve. Like for example, the right of return. You have to you have to remember. Well, what do you mean by the right to return? There are but... seven million Palestinians outside the land of Palestine that have been pushed and have been refugees all over the yeah. place. You have two point five million of them in Jordan. You have half a million in Lebanon, half a million in Syria. You have like all over the place. Yeah, those people, their land is there, and. Under no circumstances, Israel is accepting that those people that come back. And I don't know how to solve it because Israel, of course, will not accept the return of 7 million Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And of course, and because that will change the demographic. So I am telling you, you're asking me about the solution and I'm telling you, I can tell you, I can come up with whatever solution, but it will not work because there is uh, Obama in his book. He said the problem of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is that one part is so strong and the other part have nothing. One part have all of the support of the world and the other part has nothing. So even in, in communication, if you have all of this power, why would you give up any of, of the stuff that you have earned, right? I, have, I, 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 I pose no threat to you. My, um, all of my, my, uh, my power will not even leave a dent in, in, in yours. So why would you give up anything? You because understand? I would suggest that the reason they would give up something, Basim, is because it doesn't matter if you're winning a war. You are still a population under war. You are still suffering. You're, you are still under direct threat. No country wants to be at war permanently. So it is in the Israelis' interest, I would argue, to come to some kind of equitable solution. However, we, do you see what I'm saying? I here? know, but like this is the logic. Yeah. This is like what how normal people talk. There is a... a there is a book by an Israeli author. I can't remember. He said, like in uh, in the, in uh, I can't remember the book. I, I'll, I'll remember. Yeah. It said, like it's an Israeli author, and he talked about like actually Israeli society know nothing but war. For all for seventy five years, they've been war is the only thing that's been winning them land. When they 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 were going getting away with stuff that nobody is actually uh, pulling them accountable for. So for them, it is winning. It's just going into continuous conflict, and if that has to come at the expense of some people feeling unsafe, so be it. But the fact is, you, ha you just like a couple of two ways, totally unprovoked, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in, in, uh, in Syria. That's an act of war. That's an act of war. You, they are dragging Iran into it for absolutely no reason. They are dragging other people to war as if they are telling people, fight me, fight me, fight me. And I know it sounds ridiculous and sounds crazy, but that's what's happening. Give me another, ex give me another explanation for this. I guess their explanation would be that Israel backed Hamas into the attacking. Iran. 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 No, yeah. Iran. Iran. <laughs> uh, interesting slip of the tongue. So, 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 so you see with that, so with that logic, with that logic, logic. With that logic, American embassies and British embassies all over the world are not safe because they are backing Israel in all that war. You see that? Uh, you see how that logic can create in, uh, yeah. go into a, like yeah. destructive results? No, but you said give me another explanation. That, yeah, I, I know, but, yeah. but the explanation doesn't mean it <laughs> makes any sense. You understand? I understand where you're coming from, yeah. but that explanation is very destructive. It's very, it's very worrying. Yeah. Because now you're dragging. So what else? You're gonna you're gonna go and 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 hit China, uh, Chinese embassies and Russian embassies. You want to drag people into war? It's very dangerous. It's it's very dangerous. And the fact that like you think like oh because I I want peace for my people, it doesn't seem to work for them. Because look at the history of the Arab Palestinian uh, Arab Israeli conflict. Not a single time that Israel gave a plan unless it's because of like they had to lose it for war. 1973, they gave back Sinai because the, the because the Egyptians crossed the the canal and and went into war. The Oslo Accord, it happened because of the Intifada. Then no 2006, it disengagement because they were having too many losses in their ranks. They 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 the withdrawal from Lebanon because Hezbollah like it was like too much of too many casualties from the Israelis. Israelis don't understand anything other than the language of power, and they have never given land out of peace and out of the goodness of their heart. So they're always in a continuous conflict and they're pushing the world into that conflict. And it, it, it is just like, it, it is very disturbing. But I, you say the Israelis, it's, it's really important that we also separate the Israelis from the Israeli government because there's a lot of people in Israel who disagree vehemently with Netanyahu and his actions and his policies. This is a very interesting point because when you say this 
Why do I don't I hear that distinction when I, when we talk to about Gaza? Oh, we oh, talk, well, we no, 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 no. I'm 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 not talking about you. Yeah, <laughs> but, I'm, I'm, I'm but not, so he got to talk to I, us. I'm not Come talking on. about you because this is very exact. Because when you talk we about make Gaza, the same it's like oh, because no, they have elected no. Hamas. So I'm, I'm we not make the about same you. distinction. I'm not a, again. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm for the viewers. I'm making this even kind of though thing. the majority of Palestinians support Hamas. There's still a massive difference between Palestinians and Hamas. And even though the 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 massive like the as the majority in Israel actually. They they go they they have Israelis uh, uh, preventing uh, aid trucks from going to Gaza and they're like happy about. It. You have you have Israelis in TikTok making fun of, of, of Palestinians killing. You have Palestinians like in, in the flag day openly telling Palestinians that they're going to be killed. So whatever, okay, the Israeli government. So the Israeli government, the Israeli government has been pushing but, uh, for the uh, war. I, right? I think this is an important point, Basim, and, and I'll explain why. There's people on the other side of the argument who would say pro-Palestine supporters, and I've had arguments with them. Oh, they're pro-Hamas. You know, there there is you know they're they're Islamic fundamentalists. Look at them. You you see these clips of people chanting for jihad and whatever else. And I go, that is a very very small percentage of the people. I, I think what's really important to detoxify the conversation, Basim, is to say there are governments who are acting in this particular way. There are supporters of those governments, but that doesn't mean that necessarily all of the people in that area support the governments or those actions. Where, where, who has the power? The government, of course. I mean, all of these Palestinians and chanting, no matter how bad is the chanting, which I don't agree with, of course, they're of just course. like people in the street chanting, waving yeah. flags. Yeah. None of them has weapons. None of them goes in with like a military arson that is supported by the biggest military arson in the world and they go in. Yeah. So the comparison doesn't make sense, right? The comparison between yeah. like someone who has all of the power, all of the arms, all of the weapons, and we're just people like shouting in the street or like writing comments on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. But anyways, I will go with you. The Israeli government, the Israeli government all throughout their years have always chosen force, have always chosen military conflict, and they are not interested in peace. As a matter of fact, they're talking openly about the end of days, which is something I want to talk about, which is something that actually bothers me. I come from the United, I live in the United States now, and there is like a documentary on the internet called Praying for Armageddon. It is the most disturbing document I've ever seen. It's done by a Norwegian director, and it's on YouTube right now. And they're talking about like how in the, American government, you have politicians, senators, and Congress people talking about openly about the end of days, about the rapture, about the second coming of Jesus. And on the other side, you have the Israelis flying in um, five perfect red heifers, red cows, because on the 10th of April, they're gonna uh, sacrifice one of their cows because that is actually gonna be the signifying the building of the third temple. And you know what that means? Like a whole, if they're gonna like demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque and build the third temple, that's gonna be the, like very detrimental to the world. Now we have people asking for uh, the can, second Can I coming. just stop you? Because I didn't understand what you said there about the third temple. Could you just explain okay. that? So, so the, the Israelis believe that there's the third temple should be built because the first, there was two temples that were destroyed. One by the, uh, the Babylons and one by the Romans. And now this is the, basically the third temple. And they, they claim that the third temple is under the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the, 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 the mosque of the rock or the, do, do, the dome of rock, which is a holy site for the Muslims. Okay, and where is this place? In Jerusalem. Oh, this is in Jerusalem, in the holy city. Jerusalem. Right, okay. So basically they claim that they need to demolish that the mosque and build the third temple. And they have been in 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 search for the red heifers, which is perfect cows, red cows. I'm not making this up, you can look it up. There's something called the Temple Institute in Jerusalem and supported by the government. And they have flown five perfect cows from Texas a year and a half ago for $500,000. And now they are preparing them to being sacrificed when they turn three years old in the 10th of April. Like you can look it up, it's there on the internet. And they are going, when, when that happens, they're gonna use, they're gonna burn it, have the ashes, put it in the water, and they're gonna, whoever take a bath with this water is a purified Jew and they can build now the third temple. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because on the other side, you have people, someone like John Hagee, who is the founder of Christian United for Israel, each year they have $7 billion annual budget to affect politicians in Congress in order to support Israel. And John Hagee has himself has paid $80 million for Israel, not of course his money, that's his money for his congregation. And all of that they are talking about the second coming of Jesus, the rapture, the Armageddon. And it is crazy because the Christians think that when the second coming of Jesus come, 
all of the Jews will either be killed or converted. And the Jews believe when the Messiah comes, everybody will be enslaved by the Jews. And all of them is going for the Armageddon and the end of days. And you know why is this so scary? Because me as a Muslim, I've been always told that my religion is violent. You're talking about end of days. You're talking about jihadists. You're talking about all of these crazy stuff. And now the modern world, the Western world is led by a, a superpower whose politicians believe in all of these biblical revelations of the end of days. And it is scary. Everyone should be worried about that. I know that sounds like a conspiracy theory, but I'm not. These are like people in government talk openly about this. And you have now that <laughs> they have all of this preparation of what's happening in like, in, in, I don't know, what, a week from now. And people are talking actively about like pushing the, 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 the water over the brink for, 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 for an end of days uh, war. And it, it's very scary. But it's not going to happen. I mean, by the time this interview goes out, April 10th would have come and gone and we're the, still going to be here. April 10th is not going to be the end. It is going to be the beginning of events that have been talking about openly everywhere. And I know that I sound like a conspiracy theorist right now, but you have to watch these documentaries and you have to watch these politicians talking openly about that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is, it is, it's not something to be taken lightly or be making fun of because if you have people talking about openly, like, okay, Remember when we were criticized ISIS and Qaeda, how they're bringing a religious scripture into, into politics? Yeah, the theocracies, yeah. And you have now Netanyahu talking openly about the Amalek and talking openly about the Amalek is the people that were there before uh, in the biblical and they, and they have all of the right to kill their children, their wives, their, everybody from the Amalek, it's fine, they're justified. And when you use that in a political context, that is scary. It's like having the president of Egypt or the king of Saudi Arabia or the king of Jordan talking ISIS rhetoric. That's gonna be scary, correct? But now you have the leaders in Israel talking openly about this scary rhetoric and nobody is flinching. Nobody is talking about anything. Nobody is telling every, that this is dangerous. You understand what I mean? Well, I find this a very depressing conversation because I, it just makes me think that, I know you disagree, but it just makes me feel that this is really unsolvable because you know, I talk to people in Israel or people who've been to Israel recently, there's no appetite for a two-state solution with people who used to be for a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. And in Gaza, I imagine there's no appetite for a two-state solution either, right? And Hamas have said they'll do October 7th again. So it just feels to me like it's just going to go on and on and it's going to get worse. I know, but like you always have to think about who has the power. The one who has the power, want to have all the solution, or the one who has the the way out of it. You cannot well, just Power is a difficult thing in the modern world because also I feel like Israel is losing the PR war. It's mm -hmm. winning the war it's on the ground. It's about time. What you, I'm sure you think that, but what I'm saying is what, what you mean by power will change depending on the circumstances. So Israel has the military power to dominate that situation. But if the entire world pulls back its support for Israel, it will no longer have the power. And so that's kind of, I think, where we are. It's, it's, it's very difficult to tell ultimately how this is going to go. But what I sense is, certainly from this conversation, is there's not a solution in sight. Uh, I, Israel possesses more than military power. Military power is just a byproduct of the real power that they have. Uh, and I'm not, I'm also talking now as an American citizen. I'm someone who, like many Americans who, you know, have to deal with taxes, the IRS, we have to pay our taxes. And when we see hundreds of millions of dollars that go out every year to Israel tax exempt through charity works to help to build the illegal settlements that we just talked about, yeah. there's $200 million that, that from tax exempt money that went, that is power. When you have, Christian Zionists in American government talking openly about supporting Israel, that is power. Mm -hmm. And when most of those people are, are having very questionable motives, you actually should worry about the Jews more than anything. Because many of those people who, ex who support Israel, they hate the Jews. They are openly anti-Semitic, but they support Israel. You see that it's, it's, it's an oxymoron, correct? It's yes. Very, it's very weird, right? Like for example, Robert Spencer, he is the founder of Out right in America. His people went in Jacksonville and said like, Jews will not replace us. And yet he is applauding Israel for the ethnic cleansing they're doing in Israel. And he said like, Europe should do the same. When you have someone like uh, Elise Stefanik, who was a congresswoman who, uh, or, a, or a senator or whatever, she was 
very famous for grilling all of the Ivy League presidents about anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, and yet she openly support uh, Eric Palladino, who said openly that Hitler is the kind of leader that we need nowadays. What you see the hypocrisy? Most of those people who talk about like is supporting Israel, they are anti-Semitic. It is crazy. It and it is, it is, doesn't make any sense. And the fact, basically, you've seen people who are pushing for uh, 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 like a, a military force in, uh, uh, and because they, that serves their, their, what they think about what the end of days will be, about like the second coming of Jesus, we need to support Israel, but they don't care about the Jews. You, you, see, you, see, you see how we are being, being ruled and pushed by crazy people in power? It's more, when I say people in power, it's not about military force. It's much more than this. It's when you have something called the Friends of the IDF. This is the biggest charity organization. This is in America. Each year, they, they raise somewhere between 60 and 100 million dollars for veterans of the IDF. These are American people, American artists, American actors. I wonder how much money is being given to American veterans. This is the kind of support that is, so the power is not really military. The military is a byproduct of all of that. But I would say, Basim, that these fundraising efforts are going to become more and more difficult the more that people see the suffering, the casualties, the misery that is created, because it becomes harder and harder to justify. May I disagree with you? This, well, absolutely, a lot of the, people the, do. The last six months, it has been the highest uh, uh, donation has ever been made by these operations working inside of America for Israel. The ex each year it's been doing like 50 to 60 million. The IDF this year like raised 100 million dollars. Because they work on fear. Because they don't speak to me and you. They speak about the people who are concerned about that part of the place. And they are actually believe that there is a, an existential threat. So they raise more money. Zaka, which is uh, a rescue group from Israel. These are the, the group that behind all of the decapitated babies. They raised 50 million dollars out of fear mongering. So no, they are raising more and more and more money. So as, a, as an American, as someone who belongs to that country, I'm concerned about that kind of money. I'll give you an example of like how power is not just military. You have APAC. Before 2021, they didn't involve in really paying people running for office. They just worked with already elected officials. After 2021, they have bragging about pushing people into American politics. You have bragging about like the 40 Democrats uh, winning in their uh, primaries. They are actually punishing people who don't support Israel by pushing, pu they have put $4 million in for the opponent of Andy Levin, who's a Jew running for a, a, a Michigan Congress seat, just because he didn't support Israel and he's a Jew. So this whole thing, it, power is much more than military. It is the kind of support that they have no matter whatever they do. All right, Basim, it's been great. I'm glad we managed to have a more constructive conversation as we went on. And I'm sorry again for the-, the You don't need to be sorry. I really appreciate that we were able to work through that. And actually, I think it's good for people to see that I think we all come to things with certain expectations and talking points and what other people are gonna say. Uh, and I, by the way, you know, when the Ukraine war happened, I found it very personally difficult as well. And I would go into conversations with that kind of attitude as well. And so I understand it and I don't take it personally. I'm glad you were on. I'm very grateful you came on, you're a busy guy. Um, we'll continue the conversation with questions from our supporters on Locals. But before we do, we always ask the same question. What's the one thing we're not talking about that we really should be? The one thing that we should not be, though? That we're not talking about, not that we shouldn't be talking about. We're, pro we're not pro We should be asking that. that <laughs> yeah, what, what, what shouldn't we be, what shouldn't we be talking, talking no, about? It's like a, a free hit. Like, yeah. what, what, it, what is the world not talking yeah. about that it should be? Or what should we talk, be talking about more that we're yeah. not? Right now? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Uh, it's it's always in the back. I, I think which, I, I think it's the source of all evil: money in politics. Mm. Mm. I think that's that's the biggest thing. That's the, that's the biggest threat of, the, of Western democracy. If if you are go out on to, to I don't know how it is in England. Maybe I feel it more in the United States. But if you go out and you vote for all of those representatives, and then at the end of the day, they end up not following you. The, the person who gave the vote, which is the crux of any Western democracy, but they go after the, they follow the special interests lobbies, and that 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 shapes their decision. That's a big danger. If I I didn't vote for pharmaceutical company over the military industrial yeah. impact, I didn't vote for the NRA, I didn't vote for APAC, I didn't vote for those people. But yet my representatives 
is actually creating legislation that serves those people, not the, don't the voter. That is the biggest thing that we should be talking about every single day, because if that is the promise of the Western world to the rest of the world, which is democracy, this has been undermined by the money that is being corrupting this kind of, 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 of election um, operation, whatever it is. Basim, the bells of Westminster Abbey are ringing <laughs> to say enough. So we will head on over to locals, head on over there, join us, because we'll ask Basim your questions and we'll probably continue the debate. It seems to me that Gaza itself, not the West Bank, but Gaza, would be better served as an autonomous region of a larger power, i.e. Egypt. Do you think that's an acceptable solution to the current crisis? And if yes, do you think the Palestinian people would accept it? 